There we go. Okay. Hello, Chris. Thank you. So I'll give people a minute or so. Sarah, hello. Um, I'll give people a minute or so to show up and then we'll we'll get right into it. Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming. Um, so my name is Nick Farnell. I hope uh, you've enjoyed the conference so far. I know that I've seen a, a lot of really great content, so it's it's awesome to see this. And you know, it's just fun to fun to be here. My only complaint is that I'm not actually in Montreal and I, I don't get to to visit this time around. Hopefully, hopefully next year we'll be able to to visit. Um, okay, so I have 2:45 on on my clock here. Uh, we don't have a ton of time, so I'm just going to get started. Um, this little presentation today is is about elementary schools and census data, um, taking a few different ways of of getting some information together, some data that's open, some data that's less open, and kind of combining everything. So the the quick agenda, I'll tell you a little bit about me, but not too much. Then I'll tell you a little bit about the format, uh, the theme that I'm going for. I have a question for you, and then we'll get into the presentation and questions. Before I get started, any, any questions, any concerns? Life is good. Everybody can hear me and see my screen. Okay. Um, so just a little bit about me. Uh, that's my email address right there, nfarnell at niagaracollege.ca. So you can reach out to me at any time. I'm happy to, uh, to continue this conversation on um, after this presentation. So feel free to reach out to me. Um, I am a full-time faculty member at Niagara College in the School of Business. And I spend most of my time on analytics, technology, productivity software. So kind of that... Um, that technology side of business within the, the business school. Um, a little bit of excitement. We just got word that we, we got approval for a, a new program. So come next September, so 12 months from now, um, we will be offering a post-grad program in business analytics. So it's a big step forward for us, and, and I'm excited to, uh, to, to be on with that program. Um, so look out for Niagara College and business analytics coming up. Um, a little bit about the presentation format today. So it's kind of part tutorial, part show and tell. Um, where where I come from, um, I do a lot of obviously tutorials and, and teaching people how to use the technology. Uh, so this, this presentation, this setup is a little bit less focused on the actual outcomes and a little bit more focused on kind of getting there. And you'll you'll see what I mean. I'm gonna I'm gonna give away the results pretty soon. There'll, there'll be a spoiler. Um, in the chat window, can everybody see that first link that I put? NickFarnell.ca/CODS.HTML. Um, that is the the presentation for this um, for this presentation or the link to this presentation. I'm changing it up a little bit. So I spend most of my day presenting slides to groups of students. And um, for the last year and a half, it's been, you know, sitting here in my, my basement office, um, presenting slides to students. And rather than that kind of, um, here's a slide, here's a, a result. Um, this one, we're going to change it up a little bit. And rather than the slide deck, it's an interactive R markdown. So um, you can see the code as we go and see some uh, some extra little information. Can everybody see that um, that link? Okay, nickfarnell.ca slash CODS.html and all capitals for CODS. Awesome. Thank you, David. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, normally, I would encourage you to, you know, go and look around that website, but timing is amazing. Last night, my, my uh, database went down. Um, luckily, that file is still up, um, but the rest of my files are, are not there. So we don't have a ton of time. Um, I'm going to go to about 3.05 or so uh, for the, the presentation. And, and then we'll have um, time for questions at the end as well. I do have to pick my kids up from school after that, though. So the, the theme that I'm going for, focusing in on the engagement and data literacy part of the, the focus of this, uh, this conference and this year's conference, and using data that's accessible and some that's less accessible to help tell a story and help find some, some information. Um, so I do have a little poll set up. Uh, let's see if we can get the poll going. Um, so I have a poll on the, the right-hand side. How familiar are you with R or R Studio? 
never heard of it, you maybe open it once or twice, or you've completed a handful of projects, or maybe you're you're an absolute expert. So if we look at the results here, so far one or two people have have um, or a few people have opened it once or twice, which is great. Uh, as the presentation goes on, I might flip back and forth depending on the the comments and and what people are are saying. Um, maybe I'll get a little bit more technical, or if if that's not what you're looking for, I'll I'll stay away from the the technical side. So if you um, want to see or want to hear a little bit more about the technical side um, and the the approach to to problem solving there let me know otherwise I'll just kind of go through it so we're going to start the presentation so this is that that link nickvernall.ca slash cods.html and um, for for those of you who have never used R or R studio before it's an open source um, program um, mainly looking at you know, uh, data analysis, but also a lot of data collection as well. So um, this actual HTML file was also built in um, in RStudio as well. So it's not just the analysis, it's, it's the presentation stuff as well. So we have the um, kind of overview and, and table of contents up top, but as we go through it here, um, the introduction, so there's my contact info, uh, reach out at, at any time. I'd be happy to continue this conversation. Um, the, the project purpose here, the goal of this little presentation or this little walkthrough is uh, using R to access, collect, and analyze open data and some data that's not as open. So we're going to specifically look at the rankings of elementary schools in Ontario and compare those ratings to the neighborhood that they're in to look for any highly correlated variables. So the, the data collection side, we'll look at um, scraping data some, from, a, from a publicly available website. And the other collection piece is accessing Statistics Canada data through uh, a package um, within R. After that, do the analysis and then kind of, kind of share it. Um, the, the overview, of course, this is created for today's uh, um, conference. Uh, the, the overall approach like I said earlier, a little bit of show and tell, a little bit of tutorial, a little bit of um, review of R, and I'm gonna break it down into these, these main four points here. Number one, define the question. So is there or find relationships between neighborhoods and the uh, performance of elementary schools in Ontario? Number two, deciding what we're actually gonna measure. So here we're, we're measuring the correlation between these variables. We're not actually going out and measuring the performance of schools. We're not actually going out and measuring the characteristics of neighborhoods. We're measuring the correlation between those characteristics and uh, the, the, the rankings or the ratings, I should say. Uh, number three, collect and refine the data. So for the uh, performance of elementary schools, the Fraser Institute, they, they publish a lot of information and you know, maybe you like that information, maybe you don't. There's a little bit of um, uh, difference of, of opinion on, on the results of um, some of the information that they put out, but it's there. It's a good place to start. And I wanted to use that for, for a couple of reasons. One, it covers all of the elementary schools in Ontario. And two, it's almost usable. And what I mean by that is all of the schools are rated and displayed, but they don't offer this information in a way that's easy to pull in for analysis. So we're gonna to have to get around that and, and problem solve a little bit when it comes to the actual collection. So this is what the uh, website looks like. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and when it comes to Stats Canada census information, we're, we're looking at the characteristics of neighborhoods and we'll define what neighborhoods are in, uh, in a few minutes, but looking at these regions or these places in the province and are there any characteristics of these neighborhoods that um, have an impact on the rating of the, or the ranking of the schools in those neighborhoods? So as an example, here is the census subdivision of Niagara-on-the-Lake, which is where uh, the Niagara College campus that I teach at is right down in there. Um, and then looking at the census profile website on, on the Stats Canada website, this is just a tiny snippet these variables go on forever, it seems like. So there's a lot of information that you can pull 
based on a specific region. Um, if there are any questions so far, of course, use the use the chat window. Um, but I'm gonna gonna keep uh, keep moving. And then number four, um, analyze and and share the insights here. So a good place to start is just starting to get familiar with the the results that are not the results, but the the data that we're pulling. Things like how many schools are there? What's the average rating? Um, what's the what are the different ways of measuring what a region is or these these geographic areas? Okay. So starting the actual project itself, the tools and software that I used, um, I use RStudio on a, on a Mac. And these are some of the libraries that I have pulled in. Um, the two main ones, the CAN Census package is incredible. Um, it makes it really easy to pull in census data right into R. So you can define what you're looking for and then pull that information right in. And R Selenium for, for the scraping side as well. So back to defining the question, is there a relationship between neighborhood characteristics and performance of elementary schools in Ontario? Um, spoiler alert, wealthy neighborhoods with uh, people who have high levels of post-secondary ed education tend to have schools that, that perform well. Not exactly groundbreaking there. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, the actual result of the question is, is one thing, but what we're looking at here is kind of how to get to that result. Uh, so deciding what to measure, we, again, we're looking at the, the correlation between those characteristics. And next, we'll, we'll look at collecting and refining the data. What are we going to collect? We're going to collect the results of the, um, the, the ratings of those schools. We're also going to collect the location and uh, the region that those schools are in. Um, and we're going to do that from the Fraser Institute website. So I'm not going to do a, uh, a live demo of R in, in this short period of time. Um, even if we had a long period of time, a live demo of R can be excruciatingly, painfully boring to, to watch, even for somebody like me. Um, but all of the code, <coughs> excuse me, all of the code is um, in this document. So if you wanted to replicate this, you should be able to do that with, uh, with, with what we have here. So we have the uh, Fraser rankings website, then we have to figure out what it is that we're actually pulling. So looking at the, um, the elements behind the scenes here. And just doing that in, um, in the browser, then we're going to start scraping. So using our specifically our selenium in our studio to pull that data. And we're looking at it from two different kind of main steps. One, on this first page, we're going to find the, the name and the URL of each individual school. Then once we have that, put it in a nice tidy data frame and run a second loop to go through every single individual school's URL and pull the address, the ranking, uh, or the, sorry, the rating of every year and um, you know the, the region that they're in. So this is the, the code snippet to do that. Um, clean it up, get rid of any empty results, and then um, make sure that everything is looking good. So, you know, getting the rating for each year, bringing it into a nice clean data frame, uh, cleaning up the titles into something a little bit more readable. Okay, so now we have the names, we have the rankings, we have the addresses, we have the IDs and URLs of every single individual school. And trying to look at a little bit, this is where it's going to get tricky. So rather than um, you know, trying to do it by postal code or by city name, it would be really hard to match up the census data with a city name, uh, depending on the way the city name is written in the um, Fraser ranking side of things, it might not match up very nicely. So what we're doing here is changing that address into a geocoded unit. So we're looking to find the lat long of each school and then from there, we're going to join the data frames by taking the shape file of the census data and then finding the uh, geolocation of the each school, matching it up with that uh, shape file, and then using that to join to the, um, the, the census data. Um, for the most part, it was pretty clean. A few little issues. Um, Everybody likes talking about the fun stuff of the, the data collection and analysis. But when it comes to cleanup, nobody spends time talking about that, uh, that stuff. 
had to clean up a couple of addresses here and there, but for the most part, it was it was pretty good. So then we can pull the um, census data. Connecting that data was the real tricky part, like I like I mentioned, getting the geolocation, the the lat long, finding which um, region that lat long of the school falls into, and then filtering based on that uh, that geo ID. So how did we do that? Um, narrowed it down, pulled all of the the data that we were looking for, and then had to decide what kind of a region or what kind of a neighborhood are we are we looking at. So there are a lot of different ways that you can geographically subdivide the information on the, the census data. For example, um, if we looked at CMA, so Central Census Metropolitan Area, I believe, um, wouldn't really be a good one for two reasons. One, it doesn't cover the entire province. So CMA is only the, the major cities. So there are a lot of schools that fall outside of CMA. So we couldn't use that one. And there's only 46 of them in the province. So instead, looked at all of the other options and wound up using the uh, dissemination area. So there are more than 20,000 unique dissemination areas in the province. And every single school is within the dissemination area. So that's what uh, that's the, the unit that we used. So looking at dissemination areas, just exploring kind of what they are. Um, this is the coverage of dissemination areas. You can see down in kind of the, the GTA region, they get so small that you can't even see it from this far away. So zooming in uh, a little bit, which we'll, we will do in a second. Um, once we figured out that we're going to use uh, dissemination area, we can explore the results a little bit so far. So this, this kind of exploratory analysis of the school data, um, the average rating of a school in the province of Ontario is 6.01. And how does that compare across the, the different regions? So these 40 or so regions, um, York, Halton, Peel, all kind of around that seven um, result. And then we have a few schools kind of under four or a few regions with an average under four. So there is quite a bit of variation between the, the school boards or between the regions. There's also quite a bit of variation between the number of schools within a region. So a region like Toronto, you know, 450 schools almost, and then, you know, uh, places like Halliburton with, with a handful of schools. So there's quite a, <coughs> excuse me, quite a difference um, within those, those regions. Um, this, the, just the code on how to pull that. Then doing a little bit of exploratory analysis about the census data. So these dissemination areas, uh, like I mentioned, there's about 20,000 different dissemination areas in the province, um, mostly around the 500 mark of, of population, but some go all the way up to 16,000 or more. Size-wise, about a quarter of a square kilometer. So kind of that 500 by 500 meter um, size. But if we look at some of the big ones, Northern Ontario, um, you know, almost 400,000 square kilometers in one dissemination area. The reason I point that out is there's, um, <coughs> excuse me, quite a bit of variation between the sizes of these dissemination areas. So they're not exactly uh, easy to compare. Number of households as well, about 200 on average, and uh, average household income of about 80,000, give or take. Have some um, post-secondary um, data in there as well, which we'll, we'll get to in a minute. So looking at the median total household income is one uh, stat that we, we pulled off of here. So looking at it from the province view, but then down into the, the GTA view. So no surprise, some very wealthy neighborhoods in the, the Toronto core, Oakville, and then everywhere else is, is just kind of average. Also looking at population density, again, no surprise here, not a very dense province, especially outside of the GTA. Looking into the GTA, there are some uh, pretty dense neighborhoods in Toronto, pretty dense uh, dissemination areas, but other than that, not a very dense province. So now we can start, fill <coughs> excuse me, sorry, woke up with a uh, congested, uh, um, sore throat this morning. Perfect timing, right? Um, where was I? So looking at dissemination areas and filtering, realizing that not every 
dissemination, dissemination area has a school. And you can see that here. So this is just pulling those dissemination areas with a school, mainly just to confirm that we're on the, the right track here. And this, this does look like a pretty good spread. Then we're identifying some of the, the variables. So just going through the list of things like household income, um, population density, number of uh, people in the region, like those kinds of things to, to look for correlations. Then starting that um, correlation plot, uh, this is just a list of all of the variables that I pulled from the StatsCan um, database, and then looking to see if there are any major correlations between the um, average rating of the uh, school and the characteristics of the neighborhood. So again, no surprise, post-secondary attainment and median household income of people who live within that uh, dissemination area um, have a high correlation with the results of that, um, of that school. And this is a slight difference. It's not necessarily the families that have children in that school. It's just the, the neighborhood around the school. So looking at the analysis a little bit deeper, plotting the, um, the location and rankings of those schools, and then zooming in a little bit to the, the GTA just to, to kind of see where a bulk of those schools are. Also looking at, it's sometimes helpful to look at the top and bottom performers. So looking at the top 5% and bottom 5%. So the top 5%, um, th this looks kind of as expected. If you just randomly sampled 5% of this group up here, it would probably look something like this, mainly clustered around GTA, London, Windsor, Ottawa. Um, so nothing out of the ordinary there. The bottom five performers, this is unexpected. So it shows that there's, there's a much wider range and it seems like, I haven't done the analysis yet, but it seems like areas outside major population centers are overrepresented in the bottom 5%. So some findings as I run out of time here, uh, some findings and limitations. Um, of course, there, there are some limitations here. Um, the, the census, the, the date uh, side of things, census was 2015 collection, and the school data was an average of 2015 to 19. Um, I did that just because there were some years that didn't have results in the schools, and I wanted a kind of a, an average over those those times. Um, adjacent neighborhoods could also be uh, a limitation there. So some dissemination areas are very, very small and maybe not representative of what you would actually define as a, a neighborhood around there. Uh, so some next steps, if I was going to continue on with this, uh, the, the, the next thing that I would love to do is prediction of results. So uh, build some kind of a model to attempt to predict the average rating of a school based on neighborhood characteristics. So um, would you expect that every single school is, is going to get a, an average of, of six? Probably not. There's some characteristics inside neighborhoods that might push that up or down. Also looking at uh, the impact of school specific information. So things like uh, the number of students in the school, number of uh, characteristics of, of you know, that population within the school. And finally, the radius from the school. So rather than looking at the single dissemination area, uh, would it be different if we looked at a one kilometer radius or a five kilometer radius and brought the characteristics of all of those dissemination areas into this analysis? Okay, I'm almost on time. Um, so I have a minute or two for, for questions. I hope that was useful. I hope that was exciting. Um, I know it was fun for me to, to build and I always love kind of sharing these tutorials uh, with, with my students and hopefully this was, was useful. So are there any questions? Very cool. Thank you, Patrick. Any other questions or comments? Okay, I will leave it there. Um, but if anybody does have uh, oh, what's your interest or what's your takeaway in regards to open data? So being able to access this stuff through um, through census information and through a package that is open and a software package that's open is incredibly useful. 
Uh, what I wanted to do was take data that is open, like census information, census data, and then combine it and, and augment it with a data set that's a little bit less open for, for analysis. Um, so when it comes to using open data for this analysis, I mean, you wouldn't be able to, to do it otherwise. So I'm a big fan of the, the can census um, package that was developed to access the, the stats can data. Any other questions? No, cool. Okay, thanks everybody. Enjoy the rest of the conference. And like I said, if you um, want to continue this conversation, I'd be happy to just shoot me an email. Thank you.